this is my first trip to New Zealand. Even, I mean, I received multiple invitations from Dan and James to come over here, and I'm finally here. Right, so thank you so much for your invitation. Um, I'm going to talk about um, technology. Uh, my background is I'm a trained software engineer. So my, in my first job, I was a software developer, and somewhere along the way, I became a CEO for three companies. I don't know what happened there. So, <laughs> but, but um, I'm going to share a few real life examples of how we have used technology to help uh, some of our clients create a more engaging, immers immersive learning experience for their employee and for their workforce. Mm -hmm. When I say workforce, sometimes they are uh, business partners, resellers, freelance workers. So um, we're going to share four different, different, four different scenarios on how digital technology could help uh, improve learning. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is really uh, improving managers' effectiveness in uh, learning and engagement. Multiple research have found out that um, manager is the most important uh, factor when it comes to employee engagement, employee retention, employee learning. So Gallup says that manager accounts for 70% of variance in employee engagement. You know, um, the beanbag in the office, the CEO, nice benefits, all that add up 30%. Right? So um, a manager who create action plans for employees uh, uh, have, will have employees who are 7% more engaged. Um, managers who actually take action with their employees will create uh, employees who are eight times more likely to be engaged. And specifically for learning, more than half, em half of the employees out there will listen to their managers to take a suggested learning or course. Okay, the way I like to see the future of work is like this. I mean, when you look at the world of high performance athletes like um, Usain Bolt, the fastest runner in the world, uh, the New Zealand rugby team. Um, in the, their work, their job is already um, an area that is already um, using a lot of technology. Take for example, if you are in the rugby team, you probably have a sensor in your in your sneakers or what you, you call it sneakers? Boots. Or boots. Ah, yeah, yeah, there you go. You know that measures uh, the distance you run during a game, how fast you are running. You know, there are probably high-speed cameras who captures your movement, your technique, and software that is going to analyze that for you. But what happens when an athlete goes back to the dressing room? He talks to the coach, right? It is the coach who is going to help him understand all the data points and all the analysis that is coming from the technology. So in, in my view, even in the future of work, when you have AI, you have big data, you have Internet of Things, you have all that, you still cannot remove the element of the human coach, in my view. So it's important for technology, as a result, to also try to make managers as more effective coaches. Right, so how do we do that? So the, here are some real-life examples that we have, we have done with our customers. Um, take, for example, uh, we have Felicia here, who is a big data project manager. So Felicia has been working on a project for six months. He's in a different city from his manager. Uh, but it has come the time where the manager is supposed to sit down with Felicia and uh, talk to him about, to give him feedback and coach him. But the manager hasn't spoken or, or met Felicia for three months. So as a coach, how is he going to do a, a good job around that? So what we have done with, with our platform is that uh, we mine all the peer feedback and customer satisfaction surveys uh, related to Felicia's project and also feedback from his peers. Uh, and uh, we basically try to um, summarize that and make it easier to understand by looking at um, the, the keywords, the context, as well as the sentiment of those feedbacks. So the, the red words that you see over there are areas of improvement based on the feedback given to Felicia from customers, from peers, and so on. And the green words are areas of excellence, if you like, or areas where Felicia have, Felicia have done very well. So when you look at this, you know, as a manager, immediately you get, you get uh, uh, context and content 
to, 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 to start the conversation, the coaching conversation with, with Felicia. Right. Let's say, for example, something that stood out um, in, this, in this word cloud is really uh, urgent matters. So why, why was that highlighted as uh, something that needs attention? So you could actually click on the word and, and you, you could see details of the feedback specifically given about the sense <coughs> of urgency. Right? And we, we go further by um, also grouping all these contexts into um, either job criteria or skills or competency, very specific to Felicia's job. <coughs> so in this case, as a big data project manager, you know, a uh, sense of urgency is important, focus on customer is important, analysis is important, and developing people is important. And you could see, based on the analysis of the feedback, um, you know, a uh, sense of urgency is one area where maybe needs a lot more attention, right? It, it's a soft skill, you, 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 might, you might say that. It's, it's hard to fix. So as, as a person, you may, you may be wondering, yeah, I, I think I agree with the feedback, but what am I supposed to do, right? So in the coaching session, you know, um, um, you know, the manager could talk to Felicia and say, oh, you know, I have gone through the same thing before as you, and the seven habits of highly effective people have helped me. So why don't you go and look at two modules of the seven habits training, you know, uh, specifically on put first things first and be proactive. So why don't you try to do that before the 20th of April? And let's put it down so that the next time we talk again, we could review, right? Um, and then after that, try to see if that helps you to um, complete at least all the high priority things that are on your plate. You know? So we, let's set that as a goal as well. So all that could be captured and, and then could be used as a follow-up for the next coaching conversation and so on. So that's an example where um, very simply with technology like AI, you are able to um, make coaching conversation a lot more effective, a lot more focused and uh, possibly a lot more objective as well because you, you now are able to incorporate a, um, maybe more data points from uh, feedback from peers and customers. So the next thing that I think is a challenge that I've seen with a lot of clients is really cultivating the learning habits and learning culture. So what, what we're seeing with some clients is that uh, they've invested a lot of money into the learning management system but they just couldn't get the level of adoption to go up. You know, some of my clients uh, have invested millions into LMS and they have an adoption rate of 0.6% after one year. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so, so how, how do you change that, right? Um, I think w I mentioned in my previous slide um, the whole idea of so-called digital nudges. Um, why I, I, I say that is because I think we, we, all modern workers, all of us sitting here, we're living in a world that's increasingly very distracting, right? We're all multitasking, we're all um, multi-rolling, <laughs> you know, uh, and we all have at least one mobile phone, tablet, uh, and all these things are increasingly trying to, uh, you know, it's, it's not helping us to keep focus on uh, important, and, uh, important things like learning. Right, so we, 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 all, we keep telling ourselves that, okay, let's deal with the urgent stuff first. Let's deal with the deadlines first. Um, learning is important. I'll do it when I have time. I'll do it later, you know? And more often than not, uh, we lost track, we forgot. So having timely nudges to, to help us stay on track helps, right? So in our, in, in, in our app, for example, uh, when you're capturing, uh, when, when you already have some level of automation around how often do you get people to give feedback, how often do you, uh, when is the right time to recognize people for a good job, uh, when is the right time to do coaching, and so on and so forth. So you will, you will get this very timely nudges that will tell you, for example, as an individual, I, I have a learning quest, you know, that um, it's going to expire in a few hours. So I should pay attention and make sure that I get it done. Right, if you're a manager, um, you get a reminder of somebody in your team who's, who has a goal that is going to expire in seven days. So you may want to go and 
give him a human touch, human human nudge, or you know uh, check check on him on progress and give him some encouragement. And when they have completed their goals or, or learning learning quests, for example, you you get notified as well. So uh, you could either choose to automate the recognition when they do something well, or you could go and at least talk to them personally and let them know that you appreciate the fact that they have done well. Okay? So, um, the next thing that I think Natalie and, and Dan covered is, is gamification. Um, so here is an example where we're trying to turn learning and performing into a team sport. So this is um, a screenshot from uh, one of my clients, Old Data. Uh, they basically they are telephone uh, telecom company, uh, running multiple retail outlets, and on a weekly basis they are actually launching new learning materials on um, on new programs, new incentive programs, new products, new promotions, and all that. And they want to make sure that all the people uh, in the front line sales are actually up to date on such things. So. Um, so they basically track the progress of uh, participation and, 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 and uh, achievement in quizzes and, and the online videos. And uh, they put the, you know, the, the level of participation and completion of learning uh, by stores in a leaderboard. So very automatically, <coughs> the, the, the store manager now becomes like sports team coaches, you know, because now there is a, a league, if you like. And, and suddenly everybody gets more motivated, <laughs> right? Okay, and um, the next thing that we do is that um, we know as and when you are completing learning, learning uh, uh, challenges and all that, you are actually uh, earning some kind of virtual points in the system. You know, with those virtual points, you can actually go and um, do something to reward yourself, for example. Uh, in this case, um, you know, you could be using your reward points to get yourself some uh, uh, grab vouchers. Grab in our part of the world is actually the same as the Uber here, right? So, um, and that in my company as well, um, you can actually use the points that you earn from completing learning and um, uh, meeting your goals to invest in yourself again, you know? So, uh, we give you uh, e-learning points where you could use it to subsidize or pay for your own uh, online learning on something that um, you want to learn by your choice. So I think one thing that again we hear a lot from customers is that they invested a lot in learning but I think the L&D uh, uh, professionals always often have challenges proving the business impact of learning. So, so here's an example where we have Again, apply the concept of gamification to say that how do we make sure that um, you know the, the learning journey actually covers the entire learning pyramid that everyone here is very familiar with. So let's say uh, there is actually a learning campaign, you know, for uh, all the engineers in the company to learn design thinking. You know, so how do you get people to get started on that? Um, you know, first of all, this appears on. Uh, uh, when this campaign starts, it appears as a notification on the app to tell them that, okay, so now we're launching this and there's some good, good content that you can look at and so on. And here, here is a challenge and uh, uh, you, know, you need to get it done by 31st of August, for example. Um, you know, you may have to start um, from completing a pre-assessment through some reading materials, like, you know, um, and then maybe uh, hop on to some e-learning on design thinking, completing some quizzes, um, join a design thinking interest group on the app itself, you know, ask some questions, answer some questions, participate in some discussions. Um, and then um, the next challenge once after you have done that is, you know, um, you will be asked to apply a design thinking technique on a client project. And then after that, you know, uh, request feedback from your manager on what you have done. So if the manager thinks it's good, then uh, the feedback is being recorded on the platform itself as well. And last but not least, you know, if you go the extra mile of organizing a knowledge transfer session for your team, for your colleagues on what you have done, then you will get to the end of the journey where you'll be uh, uh, recognized and rewarded with a million gold coins. 
and a and an Einstein badge, <laughs> right? So so um, so with this, can you imagine you know, as a, as a learning professional now you could go to your CEO and say that we have invested X thousands of dollars into design thinking, out of which uh, seventy percent of the people uh, have completed online learning, and the technique was applied onto sixty client projects. Which out of which you know eighty percent were given um, a rating of more than four stars. So with all these learning behaviors and coaching behaviors and feedback being captured uh, digitally, um, you now have a, a much better uh, a version of analytics for you to improve your learning program even further. So this is an example where with all those activities that I mentioned earlier, you are able to get an overview of uh, as a company, as a team, and as individuals, how well are you doing in, in terms of completing learning quests? How many percent of the team member have done that? How many percent of team member have completed quizzes? Uh, from there, how many of them have set goals to apply the learning? You know, and out of which, how many percent have completed? Uh, and feedback is also one aspect of learning and uh, you could also see how, how, how well people are doing in that area. Right. Um, and for, for coaches, managers as well, you could also uh, be able to um, see the data around your own behaviour as, as a coach. How often do you give positive feedback, constructive feedback and you know, do you recognise your team members uh, in a more timely manner? Right. So, with that, I think I just want to conclude, uh, summarise by saying, uh, with the right technology, it doesn't have to be in the future. The technology is available now. That you can first improve learning retention and application. You know, using a co simple concept from gamification called the Quest, which is really a fun learning journey. You know, you can uh, now empower augment managers as coaches. So they are they are like, you know. Usain Bolt's coach, but now with sensors and uh, 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 you know uh, anal analytics to help them become uh, better coaches. You can um, help your employees cultivate learning culture and habits. And last but not least, uh, you can make better decisions around learning programs with better analytics. So Thank you. that's all. Thank you, Thank you so much.